You'll face many situations in life where you need to weigh your options and choose if what you want to do is what is easier or more accepted or to just do what makes you truly happy. YouTube is my happiness and I hope I get to do it for as long as possible. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Oh, Lord. <laughs>《Blood has happened in the last seven years since the first Draw My Life. I always wondered why it's never really been a thing to make a Draw My Life part two, because looking back, it feels like I'm an entirely different person now. So why don't we start right where we left off? At that time, it was just the beginning of The Pals. We didn't call ourselves that yet, we were still just a couple of friends that made Minecraft videos. But one day while discussing ideas, we thought, you know, it is really difficult to think of a single gaming YouTuber who hasn't played Minecraft, so what else is out there? And then we remembered this game we played as kids called Roblox. And in terms of popularity, Minecraft was up here, and Roblox was way down here. But Minecraft had been on a gradual downward trend. Meanwhile, the Roblox graph looked a little something like this. And we figured switching over might be worth a shot, especially because at the time, the only Roblox channels that existed were basically Albert Stuff, Gamer Chad, Radio JH, and of course the absolutely goaded Ethan Gamer TV. So we started making some Roblox videos, and at first they did pretty horribly, and we were having our doubts, but then a couple weeks later, the Roblox graph goes from this to this. We were blowing up faster than any of us could have possibly imagined. It was completely surreal. At that point, I had been making videos since I was 11 years old, and suddenly got more views in one day than the last eight years combined. And I don't think any of us truly understood the scale of it. To celebrate, we did what any self-respecting adults would do, and went to Disney World. That was actually the first time all the pals met each other in person. We even got to see Sub's face. I remember around then having a moment where I felt on top of the world. Life was all about YouTube. I basically didn't care about anything else. I would wake up, record videos, until I passed out. At the time, I was putting out two videos a day on my channel, two videos a day on the Pals channel, and was helping my friends out with their videos. And because I stayed home recording all the time, I wasn't often in a scenario where I could get recognized. I was growing online like crazy, but really I just felt like some guy who played video games all day. It wasn't until the Make-A-Wish Foundation reached out that I got the first taste of my new reality outside of YouTube. I was flown out to Florida where I'd be meeting a fan at a Dave & Buster's. Now, I'm Canadian and had no idea what a Dave & Buster's was, but it's basically like a Chuck E. Cheese where you play greasy and slimy arcade games, uh, meaning there were kids everywhere. Now mind you, this was my first time ever doing something like this. I was already nervous enough just meeting one fan, let alone every other child in the building. I didn't realize wearing my I Love Cat shirt basically made me a walking Dennis Daly billboard. It was a really cool experience, but definitely overwhelming to say the least. Around this time, Sub introduced us to his old friend Sketch who immediately became a core part of the group. And then shortly after that, we officially named ourselves The Pals. We were essentially the boy band of Roblox. I was even getting creepy love letters to my personal address, which I especially tried to keep private. People were posting pictures of their sketch love shrines in their bedrooms. Everything was just happening so fast. Back in 2016, I took the leap and I dropped out of university so I could dedicate my full time to YouTube. All my friends I met at school still had a few years left in their degree and most of them still lived in the same house together. And when I saw that the house right beside theirs was for sale, I bought it, moved in with Alex and Coral, and then we had an open door policy where we could just all hang out all the time. And life was set for the next few years, making the most of this time with my friends before they all graduate. 
Around then, a bunch of us went to LA for the first time, which was especially exciting because I always thought that was what YouTubers do. You get big online, you move to LA, and you start a podcast or something. By that point, I actually had a handful of opportunities fall through because people just assumed I already lived in LA. When I'd tell them I live in Canada, they'd be like, where's that? And since we were staying in Beverly Hills, we were thinking maybe we'll see some celebrities, you know. And as we drive up to our Airbnb, we noticed standing in the neighbor's driveway was famous rapper Ski Mask the Slump God. My friend and I went up to say hi, and what happens next will haunt me for the rest of my days. So Ski Mask daps up my friend, and they connect perfectly. It was one of the cleanest daps I've ever seen. And there I am, knowing what's about to come, I'm shaking and sweating. Ski Mask comes in with the dap, and all the little men in my head are frantically doing complex equations, hacking into the mainframe, trying to find any last minute solution to ensure I don't royally screw this up. Now, I want you to picture a dap going as poorly as it possibly could. I can guarantee you, whatever you thought of, this dap was worse. I came in way too strong, kind of missed his hand, locked in when I shouldn't have, our fingers got tangled somehow. I think we both in that moment just wanted it to be over and to never see each other again. We quickly asked Ski Mask's friend to take this picture and then later realized that his friend was in fact Juice World. And that's when I thought, maybe I'm not cut out for LA. Later that spring, Alex and Coral moved out. I know it's like the most classic YouTuber thing ever to move in with the friends you make videos with, and it seems like the most obvious thing to do at the time, but I think it's such an easy trap for YouTubers to fall into, where they move in with their friends, are on social media all the time, sometimes vlogging their everyday lives, and the line separating content from their personal lives often gets blurred. From the jump, I always wanted to retain that part of my life that still felt like me and not let content completely take over. But looking back, there were a lot of flaws in how I chose to balance things. I think you should always try to be your true authentic self, both in and out of videos, but I always thought that no one would want to see someone be sad or frustrated online. People want to be a part of something happy and exciting, and so those were the only parts of myself that I ever shared and tried to be. I prioritized content over my own well-being up until only very recently. A perfect example of this, which I still have never shared, was when I got into a car accident just a few blocks away from my house. I was on my way to a friend's place, my car got completely totaled crossing the highway, and I didn't feel like I needed to go to the hospital or anything, so I just walked home, and since I had some unexpected free time, I just kept recording videos without saying anything about what had just happened. The obligation to post was so ingrained in my daily routine that in my head, taking a break or even just slowing down wasn't an option. I was gradually starting to become more exhausted. I started turning down almost every opportunity that came my way, whether it was panels at conventions or flying out to collaborate with others. It all felt like distractions from my videos, which already were becoming increasingly harder to keep up with. But then something happened that I wasn't expecting at all and would significantly change the course of my career. I was reached out to by a TV writer and producer whose kids were big fans. They saw the potential in the Dennis and Sir Mazelot duo and asked if I was interested in turning that into a cartoon show. They offered a full-fledged production to make it happen, involving an animation studio, investors, broadcasters. It was the real deal. And for the first time ever, my childhood dream of making my own cartoon was actually attainable. I was fairly warned that a production like this could take years, and although I was already starting to feel a bit overwhelmed with content creation, this felt like an opportunity I couldn't turn down. Now marks the start of 2019, the year of the pals, ending very suddenly. Now, I'm sure most of you know the story of how some tweets were made by one of the members leading to them getting kicked out of the group, but I'd be lying if I said that was the sole reason the pals disbanded. To be honest, at that point, we had all been making videos together every day for over three years, and the exhaustion was starting to get to all of us. The drama that went down, in some ways, 
kind of masked that our time was coming to an end anyways. Don't get me wrong, I love the pals. I look back on what we achieved as a group very fondly, and I wish our story was capped off with something positive, rather than everything just kind of falling apart. But that's why we deleted the video explaining what happened on the pals channel. As a group, we didn't want that one event to be how we were remembered. We all grew up watching friends having fun playing games and making videos together, and that's what we always try to be for our audience. I just want people to remember that the group was so much more than the event that caused the falling out. We built something really special together that so many people loved. I was devastated when it was over, but at the same time, it felt like a huge stress was lifted off my shoulders. That lingering feeling of starting to become overwhelmed, at least for the next few months, kind of seemed to dissipate. Now that I was going into the last summer with all my friends before they'd graduate, I bought a house in Vancouver, and while the house was being renovated, my friends and I were all coming to terms that this would be the last few months we all have together before each of us move away to whatever cities our careers take us. So we decided to make it the best summer of our lives. I lived in a city called Kelowna, which is a somewhat untapped Canadian paradise. It's on a beautiful lake with beaches everywhere, gorgeous hikes, camping, wineries, skiing, lots of old people. We really had everything at our disposal to have an unforgettable summer. And to top it all off, my close friend Gabby from back home where I grew up got a one-way plane ticket to visit me for a indefinite amount of time. It ended up being one of the best summers I've ever had. We were constantly outside making memories with friends, Gabby and I's love blossomed, and making videos didn't feel like they took up my entire days. At that time, I also became the first person to hit 1 million followers on Roblox, and I won the Best Video Creator Bloxy Award. But as each day went by, I gradually felt more of that looming feeling that as all my friends move away to different cities, I'll have to finally say goodbye to this chapter of my life. Thankfully, Gabby was also moving to Vancouver, and we've been living together ever since. As excited as I was to move to a new city, it's easy to forget just how stressful moving can be, and the plethora of tasks you don't account for that suddenly take up basically your entire schedule. On top of the move and still making daily videos, production of my cartoon show was really starting to ramp up again, and that overwhelming feeling that I thought I had overcome suddenly hit me like a train and then COVID happened. Amongst all the uncertainty, everything else kind of slowed down, and so there really wasn't much reason to not just sit out on the patio all day. Now, the reality is during COVID is when a lot of YouTubers started blowing up since everyone was online then. And on paper, I should have taken that opportunity to really double down on making videos, but at that point, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I had been posting multiple videos every day for years, and especially now with the pals being over, when it came to content creation, I felt more alone than ever. I felt like my main obligation to put out daily videos was almost purely to keep the channel relevant enough for the sake of the cartoon show. And once production started up again, I had to put my stress to the side and leave it unchecked. Making videos felt like sprinting through sludge, and it didn't seem like there was a single person I could talk to about it that truly understood the position I was in. I didn't feel like I had the right to be stressed or unhappy. I made YouTube YouTube videos full time, which was my childhood dream, and now I was working on a cartoon show, which was my other childhood dream, and I was safe in my home in Vancouver during the pandemic. So how did I get to a point where I was so miserable? I kept telling myself that I should be incredibly grateful and that I'm so privileged compared to others, and I felt so guilty that I wasn't loving life every day. I truly felt like I didn't have the time or energy to properly address my anxiety, and I couldn't explain to you why it was at this point I thought, you know what, we should get a puppy. Her name is Masha, and getting her is definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made. But man, when she was a puppy, that girl had the devil inside of her, I swear. She somehow turned out to be the best dog ever. She's such a sweetheart and loves absolutely everybody, except for cats. She really, really hates cats.
So while entering dog fatherhood was when I started recording voice lines for the cartoon show out of my closet. I was really looking forward to voice acting in a proper recording studio, but the team really made it work remotely, and I still feel like I got invaluable experience. I'd say voice acting may have been my favorite aspect of working on the show. Now, I can't tell you how nervous I was leading up to the release of the show. We put in so much work, and I've never done anything like it before. I felt like any time a YouTube has tried making traditional media outside of YouTube, it would get absolutely torn apart. Granted, usually for good reason, most YouTuber movies or shows are terrible, but all I could think was, is that gonna happen to me? So season one was released, and it ended up being a huge success. These years of stress and pressure, not wanting to let everyone down, whether it was my audience giving them a good show, or the production team keeping the channel and characters relevant enough so that the show doesn't flop, everything came together in the end. And I was so relieved and so ready to relax, but I didn't feel like I could, because there were already talks about a bigger and longer season two. So we're approaching the end of 2020, and the burnout is very real. Making videos, the release of the show, it felt like I was working two full-time jobs, all while raising a puppy. I was finally nearing my breaking point. I was still doing that weird, toxic, masculine thing men do where they refuse to show any emotions, which I feel like is often misconstrued as a sign of strength, but really bottling everything up can actually lead you to being your weakest self. I was trying so hard to keep it together all the time, especially in videos. Sometimes I would press record, try to muster up a few words, and I couldn't. I would just sit there in silence with a million things going on in my head. The things I did every day for years suddenly became impossible. It became a pretty routine thing for me to just go sit in my car alone until I felt like I could contain myself again. My fear and stress was building up so much inside of my head, and for the first time ever, I had a panic attack, which pretty much ended up being the tipping point. The next time I went to sit in my car, I finally hit a mental wall, and I thought, why the hell am I doing this? And right then and there, I made a tweet, without giving it any second thought, saying I desperately needed a break. The year is now 2021, and it was my first time taking a break since 2016. I made a point to give myself the freedom to just do nothing for a bit, and I don't think at any point I actually enjoyed doing nothing. I could still feel the stress of not uploading. Every day that went by I felt like it was a step closer to the channel dying, and so I quickly decided that doing nothing obviously won't get me anywhere, and as long as I'm making progress outside of uploading videos, it wouldn't just feel like I'm wasting the days away. I started therapy, practice meditation, I spent a lot of time with Masha, I read a book. I spent the next three months really just focusing on myself, trying to make meaningful steps to get better in any way that I could. I felt like I learned so much about mental health, mindfulness, and just being more in touch with your own emotions. And I realized that so much of the stress and pressure I put on myself was all forming within my head. I was starting to feel ready to return to videos with a much clearer mindset. I know now that three months isn't nearly enough time to have everything figured out. And even though I felt like I made immense progress on my mental health, looking back, I still wasn't really entirely focusing on the right things. I quit Roblox and dabbled in Minecraft for a bit, but over time, I started realizing I had lost that sense of being a part of a community. Even though I was trying to make videos I thought I'd be more excited about, it still felt pretty lonely. And that's what really started opening my eyes, and it clicked with me that I may have had some misplaced judgment. I blamed a lot of my burnout on Roblox, thinking I was just tired of the platform. But it's no wonder I felt like I had no one to talk to that could relate, because I was isolating myself from those very people all these years. I decided to try asking a bunch of YouTubers if they wanted to be in a crab game video. They all said yes, and the next thing I knew, I came back to Roblox, and have been recording with other YouTubers all the time ever since, and those videos ended up becoming my favorite ones to this day. And taking that step to reach out to others was one of the best decisions I ever made. As I grew closer with other creators, I quickly considered them my good friends. 
Albert invited a bunch of us to his house where I got to meet everyone in person for the first time. We went to the Creator Clash where we got to see YouTubers beat the crap out of each other. There were so many other creators everywhere. It was one of my first times ever feeling like I was surrounded by my peers. And now take that feeling and tenfold it because a few months later we went to the Roblox Developer Conference and it made me realize this whole time I was a part of this wonderful community and I had done myself a disfavor by not being a more active part of it. That feeling of being isolated was completely gone. I felt so much more motivated with content. I started remembering why I loved YouTube so much in the first place. Probably the biggest thing that's happened in the last seven years is that I have a little sister now. She's six years old and probably my biggest fan. She's inspired me to not take YouTube so seriously and reminds me so much of myself growing up watching groups of friends make videos together, and she made me realize it was never about the specific game YouTubers would play, or if they could hop on trends before anyone else. It always came down to seeing friends being a part of something together, and as a viewer, feeling like you're a part of it too. That's what in my mind, YouTube has always ultimately been about. It's now been about two years since I hit my lowest point mentally. These days, mental health has become such a widespread topic, and I think it's great that it's getting more awareness, but I also think that as a society, we put so much pressure on being happy all the time and achieving your dreams. I fell into the mindset that if I'm not happy, then I must be doing something wrong or that I failed myself. But life isn't about being constantly happy or being able to control what happens in it. Your life isn't driven by the things that happen to you, but rather how you react to them. I think it's so easy to get caught up in the chaos of life and all the ongoings in the world. Instead, just put that focus on yourself and your loved ones. Be kind to others and good things will come to you and let life come to you as it does naturally and don't try to twist and redirect it at your own will. It's okay to be unhappy sometimes. That's just life. It doesn't mean you're not gonna get back up stronger than you were before. I ended the last draw of my life by saying that YouTube is my happiness, but I now realize that you shouldn't tie your happiness to one thing especially your career. Now I do my best to find happiness in whatever I can every single day, whether it's going on a walk with Masha, watching a movie with Gabby, or recording a video with friends. Life isn't about a single goal or purpose, but moments and relationships that come and go, and we should cherish every single one of them. The first draw my life was made to celebrate us hitting 500,000 subscribers. Seven years later, and there's now over 9 million of you. I know I don't thank you guys enough, but rather than just saying it, I want to show you how grateful I am by continuing to put out the best videos I can. And not just because I feel like I owe it to you, but because I genuinely want to. It's a feeling that I missed for a long time, and I'm just so glad to finally have it again. Thank you so much for watching all these years, and however many more to come.